Hey brothers and sisters, Matt Hatton here. Uh, so I've put together a base building guide that's really um, designed to help new or uh, early players get to a mid game level. If you are a higher level player, you already uh, feel like you're at mid game. If you um, could just watch a few minutes of this video and maybe click around, see if the information in your opinion is useful. And then if it is, um, you know, please uh, feel free to share it with members of your alliance that are maybe new or if you invite new friends uh, over the next couple months that are trying to figure out uh, what to focus on um, as far as their base building or you know what to prioritize or one you know over what to kind of save till later um, then you know just you know share this video uh, if you think it'll help out because that's my ultimate goal here is really to help um, a lot of the new players get to mid game and really um, get past the, the fun early stuff to the really, really fun mid-game stuff where the game really opens up and there's a lot of stuff to do. So for the uh, base building priorities uh, to arrive at mid-game, I think there's three main things. One is uh, achieving a stronghold level uh, 20. Uh, the other is unlocking all land in the buildings as far as the basic buildings, um, not including the advanced buildings. And then uh, setting up a fast resource production that's not only going to uh, support uh, the ability to get your hands on three, four, or five star heroes, but also uh, resources that are going to fully sustain you for what you need to feed those heroes or to feed things like mana troops or uh, regular troops. So for the mid game, the way I'm defining mid game is having a training camp at both level 13 and level 20. Uh, having Titan farming, uh, that you're able to achieve um, a tier 9 loot level on 8 star Titans. Uh, having a war team uh, that consists of 6 full teams of either epic or legendary heroes uh, that you can use. Uh, 4 star epic heroes are fine, um, but obviously uh, 5 star heroes are just going to help you uh, that much more. Um, and then having a barracks that's at least level 6 uh, to help you with what you need to do with your troops. So one quick disclaimer, I'm going to make two suggestions on spending money in this game. Uh, so I try to stay away from encouraging that. But when it comes to the base building, I think for a minimal investment in my opinion, uh, you can actually speed up um, your base building and getting started and trying to get to mid game. Uh, you can really speed it up a lot. Um, if you are under 18 years old and you're watching this, obviously, you know, discuss any type of spending uh, with your parent or legal guardian um, on this game or any game in general. Um, but with that said, um, the two options that I'm going to recommend for uh, that are going to cost money, there's actually free paths to both of those. So I'm going to make sure to bring those up as well uh, so that you don't feel any type of pressure or obligation or, or feel like that you have to spend money to move forward in this game uh, because you can use this guide and you absolutely don't have to spend any money if you don't want to. So the first um, suggestion is going to be $5 for the monthly VIP pass. And the second suggestion is $10 for the uh, Path of Valor that's currently active. Um, and that Path of Valor uh, is usually goes on for about a, a month and a half. And then there's a week or two where it's not going on and then the next one starts. Uh, so there's usually, in, at any time you join, there's probably a Path of Valor going on. So for the VIP Pass, um, the reason why I recommend the VIP Pass is for $5 a month, you're getting a second base builder, which is really critical uh, to trying to build anything with your base and, and, and level up your different buildings in your base. Um, the other nice thing is you're getting uh, 90 emblems, 90 loot tickets, a daily summon, and 900 gems uh, per month. Now this is assuming that you're logging in every day uh, because any of the uh, daily uh, items, they don't stack up. Uh, when it comes to the emblems, loot tickets, or gems. So if you don't log in um, you know, a few days a month, you're not going to get those. The uh, daily summon token um, will stack up automatically. So you will always have uh, at least 30 of those, assuming there's, you know, it's a month with 30 days. Uh, the free uh, VIP option is if you look in the game, you can actually invite friends to the game. And as, as long as those friends get to level 10, you're gonna earn uh, various amounts of free VIP access. 
So you could uh, essentially get most of the VIP access you need uh, for free uh, if you recommend enough friends that just take their character uh, up to level 10, uh, which they could probably do in a matter of a few days just to try out the game and see if they actually like it and they want to keep playing. The second uh, suggestion is the Path of Valor, which is going to cost you uh, $10 uh, to enter. Uh, if you go through the full Path of Valor, you're getting 3 million iron and 3 million food, uh, which is really helpful when you're trying to level up your base quickly. You're also getting 7 epic summon portal tokens, you're getting 1 epic troop token, 4 ascension uh, materials, and 230 emblems. In addition, you're getting a lot of various crafting, farming, and battle items, um, but I didn't want to list all those out. Uh, but if you go in the game, you can easily look at the Path of Valor and kind of see what uh, some of the other, other stuff is. And then if you do choose to purchase the Path of Valor, when you choose it, you're going to get 300 additional gems and you're getting an epic summit token uh, that you could use. So the free path um, on the Path of Valor uh, is still pretty good. Um, you can get uh, a million food and you can get just under a million iron. You can get one four-star ascension mat, you can get one three-star ascension mat, and you can get one world energy flask. So the Path of Valor, uh, whether you choose the free option or you want to pay the $10 to take advantage of the, uh, the pay side of it, um, it's available once you get to level 12. So before your character is level 12, if you're there, you're going to see it, but it's going to be grayed out. So just keep that in mind. You're going to need to be level 12 to start uh, the free path. And the other nice thing about the Path of Valor is you can um, start through the path and get all the way to the end and try to see how far or how much stuff you can unlock. And then if you want to purchase, you can purchase at the very end, right before the time expires. Um, so you can just wait. And this is really beneficial if you uh, come into the game about halfway through the Path of Valor. It's probably a good idea to wait on that anyway to see how far you can progress before you have to make that decision whether you want to spend $10 or not. You'll still get all the free stuff, which is nice, um, but just you know, be very aware of the end date of the Path of Valor when you're watching this video to make sure that you're not just throwing down $10 with and giving yourself very little time to progress through. So the Stronghold Milestones, the main ones in my opinion, are level 10 when you can unlock the Barracks, and then more importantly is level 15. Uh, when you're unlocking enough land and resources to have eight farms, three food storage, four mines, five iron storage, three training camps, three houses, and four forges. So when it comes to base building, uh, really iron storage is your priority number one. Uh, you should always gauge um, what you need to build based on where your iron storage is in relation to what you're going to need for your next stronghold level. So if you click on the iron storage at the top uh, on your game menu or your game screen, you'll be able to see um, in this example, it says my current max is 2,223,000. If you click on the stronghold and see what it's going to take to level up, you can see if your current storage is adequate or not for that next level uh, that you would want to upgrade to. If it is, Great. You can focus on other things uh, like maybe mines or uh, food storage or, you know, different aspects of your base. But if it is under uh, what you're going to need once that current stronghold is complete, uh, you want to go ahead and just prioritize putting that iron uh, or the building into your iron storage. Once you get to your five iron storages at all at level 18, you're going to have enough for the stronghold level 20. So you're actually good to stop there. And you might not ever have to uh, touch that iron storage again or upgrade it until you really start getting in, into the advanced buildings later on. For the second priority, I'm going to say it's the watchtower. And there are two ways to supercharge what the watchtower is doing. Uh, the first obvious way is to upgrade the watchtower. That's going to increase your production per hour of both the uh, food and the iron. Uh, but the second option that a lot of players kind of overlook is the outposts um, so when you're going when you look at the maps or the provinces in season one you're going to see an outpost at the end of most of those stages there's 21 total each time you progress 
through the season one uh, map and unlock a outpost or take it over, you're adding plus 5% to your production increase of your watchtower. There's ultimately 21 of these outposts. So your goal as you play the game is not to pick a spot on season one and just farm it over and over and over again because you think that it's efficient with your world flag usage. You want to keep pushing forward as far as you can comfortably in season one to ultimately try and get to province 23 and unlock that last outpost. Uh, because that increased production level on the watchtower is going to make a difference over the long term. So one uh, thing that's also easy to overlook about the watchtower is when you're leveling up, you're looking at the storage capacity and you see storage capacity of food and iron. It's an easy assumption to make that that storage capacity of iron is contributing to what you're going to need for your stronghold level up. But if you read the fide print, that's not actually what's happening. The storage capacity as you upgrade the watchtower is only affecting the storage capacity of the watchtower, not your iron storage. So what that means is if as you fill up your watchtower, you just got to collect your food and iron. It's just giving you that much more that you can actually store there. Um, but again, it, it's not going to be taken in consideration when you're trying to level up your stronghold as far as what you need. So don't look at this option over your iron storage thinking, well, I'll upgrade the watchtower and it's going to help me get there because it won't. So the third priority is the forge. Um, you're going to want to pick one forge and level it up to seven. Um, you're going to want to stay away from healing potions, but you're going to want to unlock all these other items that you can build. Uh, so you just pick the research option as you level up your forge and unlock these, but skip the healing potion. I'm going to tell you exactly why in just a second here. So again, upgrade one forge to level seven and stop. You don't have to upgrade any of the other forges at this time. So for the minor healing potion, um, this is an easy one. It's gonna unlock at forge level one. It takes common herb and 500 food to make. You can essentially find common herbs everywhere. Um, but the nice thing about the minor healing potion is you can carry 20 of these. So it's a pretty significant amount of healing that you can bring into your battles. Uh, for the minor mana potion, uh, you can carry five of these and they're going to give each hero uh, that you use it on 25% mana. Uh, they're available at forge level two and they're also relatively cheap to make. They do require one large bone and one leather strip. So if you need more bones, you can get those in um, area 9-1. And if you need more leather strips, uh, the best place uh, is you can get those at 10-9. For the antidotes, um, this heals all heroes by 25 uh, health and it cures all status ailments. So when I first started looking at the antidotes, I said, well, I have a healer um, or a hero on my team that dispels status ailments. I'm not going to, I don't need antidotes. But I don't really look at antidotes for the status ailment cure. I really look at the fact that they heal for 25 HP for all your team members. So if you use one antidote times your five team members, that's 125 uh, healing uh, that you're doing. And if you have 10 total, that adds up to 1,250 uh, health points that you're healing. So the antidotes are a nice addition to the uh, small healing pots. Because 1,250, I mean, that can help in the, in the close battles when you're trying to push through that season one map. Uh, the ingredients to make these are going to be uh, one oil and one clean cloth. And the best source for oil is 12.9 and the best source for clean cloths is 5.8. The arrow attacks you can make at forge level 4. Uh, and these are really great because they provide damage uh, to the enemy. Um, but then they also decrease the accuracy of all enemies for 4 turns. So... Is the more you can keep your uh, enemies from attacking you, obviously the more um, health that you have or the less healing that you're going to need to use. So these are really good to kind of make your uh, healing potions or your antidotes if you're using those for healing that much uh, more efficient. Uh, they're uh, pretty cheap to make as well. Uh, they, they take one crude iron and one string and 2100 iron. The best source for the iron, or the crude iron is 6.8, and the best source for the string is 7.7. The other thing I'll mention about the uh, arrows 
is if you get to a point where you're waiting on your stronghold uh, to uh, get to the point where you can level it up again, and, or you're waiting for your iron storage, if you need to burn off some iron if you're starting to get capped out, uh, arrows are a great way to just make those on the side in one of your forges. Um, because they're pretty cheap to make and you can just burn through some of that excess iron instead of just being capped out and wasting it. So the healing potion, um, at first glance, it looks like it's it's great because it, well, it heals you for more than the minor healing potion. Um, but I'm going to say don't even research this and skip it. Just save your food, your crypt mushrooms, and your crystal shards uh, for your uh, banners uh, that we'll talk about in a second here. But just so you understand why I'm saying to skip the healing potion completely and focus on the minor healing potion. If you look at the potions for the minor, you can uh, they heal 100 HP per potion. You can carry 20. So 20 times 100 is 2,000 total HP of healing. For the regular healing, it heals for 225. You can carry 10 potions. So 10 times 225, that equals 2,250 healing. So, so far, the healing potion looks better, but you got to really look at the cost of what it's taking to make a healing potion versus a minor. The total cost for to make 20 minor healing potions at 500 food each is 10,000 food. So for 2,000 uh, hit points of healing, it's costing you 10,000 food. Do the math on the healing, the regular healing potion. 10 times 3,670 food is costing you 36,700 food for 2,250 points of healing. So for an additional 250 healing points, you're spending an additional 26,700 food. It's a horrible, horrible investment of your food. So for the bear banner, um, this is where you're going to use your crypt mushroom and your crystal shard that you're not spending on that regular healing potion. The bear banner is great because it's increasing the attack of all your heroes by 25% for four turns, and you can start making it at forge level six. So this one is a pretty easy one to get your head around. The more attack you're doing, the, the faster the enemies are going down, the less time they have to damage you. And then again, you're making your uh, healing resources, like your healing potions or your antidotes, last that much longer. The best source for both Crypt Mushrooms and Crystal Shards, I'm going to say, is 4-1. If you look online, it's going to tell you different uh, provinces and areas for that. But I'll tell you 4-1 uh, why that's best in just a second. Uh, for the Turtle Banner, uh, it's giving all your heroes plus 25% defense for four turns. You can start making these at Forge Level 7. And it's going to cost you two fire stones, one potent leaves, and one sunspire feathers. The best source for these ingredients also is 4-1. And then the reason why I'm saying 4-1 uh, of season one is that it's actually a great source of uh, great source for all the different ingredients that we listed uh, for all the items that you can make in, in your uh, forge level seven. Uh, they're not the individually the best, but because you can find all of those in one spot, you can also get backpacks or adventure kits that you need. It's really a great way uh, to grab a bunch of resources in one spot instead of jumping around from, uh, to, from one zone or one province to the next. Um, the other thing I'll mention is don't use or don't look at this and say, okay, well, I'm just going to keep repeating 4-1 over and over and over again. Because if you need recruits, there's much better options, so you need to look at that. And then if you need XP or you want to maximize XP, you need to look at that uh, for, you know, you look at what stage is best for that. What I'm saying is if you need to top off some of your resources and you have some flags that you want to use and you're not really ready to push forward uh, further in Season 1, just keep 4-1 in mind um, for consideration that it's really kind of a nice one-stop shop. And it's only three uh, world flags to, to clear. So the, for the priority number four, uh, this is going to be your training camps. So what I'm going to recommend is you're going to upgrade all the training camps that you have available, which at level 15, uh, stronghold or less, is going to be uh, probably three training camps. You just want to level those each to level two and stop there. These are going to be your go-to um, source of your one and two-star feeders. Uh, but for this training camp, 
Uh, it's going to require adventure kits or the backpacks, um, which you will run out of from time to time. So that's going to bring in why the second or the first training camp you're going to level beyond level two is going to be uh, to training camp level 11. What training camp level 11 is allowing you to do is farm those one or two star feeder troops, uh, but it's significantly less cost and it's going to um, not require the backpacks. So if you get to a point where you don't have backpacks and you have a lot of food that's starting to stack up or you have a lot of recruits that are starting to stack up, instead of investing in making your houses bigger, just level up the training camp to 11 and just put all your extra food and your recruits that you can into this one because then you can just pull those out and transfer those back to a level two once you get backpacks. Or you can, uh, if you cap out um, on food, but you don't have uh, the recruits um, to put these into training camp 11, then at that point, maybe you can level up a couple of your houses and just take that up a little bit. But I've never really had a problem putting a bunch of recruits and food into training camp 11 um, where, where it becomes a problem. I mean, it's, it's just a better storage option, in my opinion, uh, for those recruits. Uh, for the um, third level, we're going to level up one of your training camps to level 13. Uh, this is really where you're going to be opened up to making your own three or four star troops. So this is very important. Um, being able to make or have a chance at your own three or four stars without having to depend on spending any money on the portal is going to be crucial. Uh, because without this, your only free path uh, is any uh, regular summon tokens that you're going to get or if you have the VIP pass getting that daily summon but just keep in mind even uh, the best case scenario the best hero that you can get is a three star so this training cap level 13 is really your first access to a free path uh, to get your four star epic heroes which for the mid game are going to be the um, biggest piece um, of your teams so just level one of those to 13 and then you're good to go. Um, you're actually uh, done with the training camps uh, as far as the mid game until you get to Stronghold 20. But Stronghold 20 um, is going to give you, I mean, excuse me, training camp 20 is going to uh, give you access to the three, four, and a chance at five star legendaries without having to deal with paying for the portal. Uh, so this will be big. Once you get to Stronghold 20, um, hopefully this guide is going to help you do that. Go ahead and level up that fourth training camp to all the way up to 20. And then uh, good luck trying to get your hands on some of those five stars. So the priority number five is going to be the barracks. So what I'm going to suggest here is uh, when your uh, stronghold is uh, up to 20 or if you have gotten your hands on some four star troops, Go ahead and take one of your forges. Um, if, if you haven't upgraded any of the other forges, just take that second forge, level it up to five, and then convert it to your barracks. Uh, if you level up your barracks, level it up to six, but stop. Anything past level uh, six on the barracks is really end game type stuff uh, because level six is gonna give you the ability to take a four star troop up to level 12 you are not gonna have the resources to take a troop probably up to level 12 uh, for a while. And you're not going to have the resources then to take any of these troops past level 12. Um, that's really an end game uh, type activity. So don't, don't waste any resources if you're trying to focus on stronghold or you know your training camps or anything. Do not make the mistake of saying, oh, I have the barracks, let's let's take it up, because it's just going to be a waste of resources. Um, also, when it comes to the barracks, just because you've unlocked the barracks, I would strongly recommend not putting any of your um, troops, feeders, or any of your food resources into level one, two, or three star troops. Um, just if you have the VIP, um, or if you get your hands on some epic uh, troop tokens, just use whatever troops that you have um, as the stock version. Um, and then when you get your four star troops, then you can look at leveling those. 
And even when it comes to the four star troops, I'm going to strongly recommend staying away from the critical troops and just stick with the uh, four star mana troops. There's one other tip here, and that's going to be if you do get your hands on epic troop uh, tokens or summon tokens, now that the ninja event is live, I'm going to say just wait until the ninja event comes up and then use your uh, epic summon troop tokens in the ninja event instead of the regular uh, portal. The reason being is you're going to get the same odds of 10% for your four star troops, but you're getting an additional 5% on top of that to try and pull a ninja troop. So it's going from 10% to 15%. The four star troops are pretty hard to get, so that 5% increase is uh, pretty significant. Uh, so just my suggestion, but hold on to those uh, tokens and save them for that ninja portal. So as far as the mid game, uh, our goals were really looking at um, the training camp, the Titan farming, the war and the barracks. What we went over with the training camp, that's going to cover your training camp uh, level 20, um, which you're going to get by getting a stronghold 20. And then for your war team, um, you know, you need your six teams, uh, potentially with all epic hero troops or, or epic heroes or above. Um, so through the training camp uh, level 20, you're going to be able to get those teams built. Um, so that's going to achieve your war goals. For the barracks, we talked about the level 6 uh, and why to stop there. So the last piece is the titan farming. Uh, I created a guide specifically on this. It's called 8 Star Titans Ascendant Mat Mid Game Meta. I'll link this video uh, to in the description um, of this current video so that you can watch that. But I strongly, strongly recommend just watching that video. It's very clear. Uh, it'll take you through, you know, why to farm eight star Titans and how to achieve a nine, uh, tier nine uh, loot by getting a B score. So it's a pretty helpful guide. Um, so you can share that uh, with your Alliance as well if you find that helpful. And then the last thing I'm gonna leave it on is, you know, think about the new players or the players in your Alliance that are maybe struggling if you if you feel like this video was helpful or the information makes sense by all means share it with them again the whole goal of this guide is to help the brand new players or the early players get to mid game because uh, you probably agree although the game's a lot of fun at the beginning i mean a lot of the fun is getting to those activities uh, in mid game uh, being able to really contribute to the titan battles or the war events in your alliance you know, that's all mid-game stuff, so the faster you can get players there, I think the faster they can really get to that next level of fun with this game. Uh, so if you agree, you know, share it, um, and uh, we will end it on that. But, you know, thanks for uh, watching this video, and as always, I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, guys.